Hey friends, welcome to this video, Power BI versus Tableau. Now, the reason I want to cover this is because on the internet, I found a lot of comparisons and also a lot of students ask me, what is the difference? Which tool is better, for instance? And uh, as I said, those blogs on the internet, they often are either biased or simply wrong, at least from my point of view. So let me give you my view on those on this comparison um, regarding or considering that I am a business analyst who is actively working with both tools. Okay, so please also don't take my word for it. These are also my opinions, which I'm showing you here, but hopefully they give you some kind of better perspective about this. And the things I'd like to cover is the licensing, uh, the AI features, ETL capabilities, cloud versus on premise, data connection and performance, as well as strengths and weaknesses and some commonly asked questions. So hopefully after this little presentation, you're a little bit smarter and can use this also if you just need to, uh, well, someday compare those two tools based on uh, some customer who asks you or a colleague who's asking you about that, okay? So let's get into that. At first, about the licensing. Well, in Power BI, we have various licenses. Here, for instance, Power BI Embedded, if you want to embed content often for a third party, we have Power BI Pro, which is uh, most often uh, the license for an individual user who is using it. There's also a premium per user license if you want to apply premium features, but you don't have Power BI Premium itself. Or if you are a large company, then oftentimes you have Power BI Premium, which is simply uh, cloud-based, right? Um, and covers all the licensing for uh, all the people in your organization. Even though you might use Power BI Premium, keep in mind that if you are a developer report, you still need to have a pro account. Even though uh, the pro accounts are often already included in Microsoft uh, 365, right? Um, licensing offices. So, but this is something you need to find out in your organization. Just wanted to mention this in here. If you want to, you just, can just pause the video and read through it if you want. Uh, for now, let me go to the next one. So about Tableau, Tableau itself normally has three kinds of licenses, which is the creator license, the explorer, and the viewer. Uh, the difference is that the viewer, for instance, is just the license which everybody needs who wants to consume the reports, so the work you have done. Um, explorer and creator are the two licenses which you can use in order to create reports. The difference is that the explorer is only allowed to work with published data sources, at least this point in time, and also is only allowed to work with Tableau uh, on uh, or in his or her browser. Tableau Creator is the license you need when you really want to create dashboards. You want to have the full flexibility, the full power of Tableau. That's why the Creator license is also the most expensive one. So that's about the difference between licensing regarding those two products. When it comes to features, especially AI in this point of time is interesting for us. And in Power BI, there are various AI features which are available, either in the desktop or in the Power BI service. Some of them uh, require premium licensing, just wanted to mention this, uh, but you can see this also regarding the license type in the last, uh, well, section in this table. And we have various AI capabilities regarding visualizations. For instance, we can use R and Python, the key influencer visual, Q&A, decomposition tree, and other kinds of things. Regarding data preparation, we have cognitive services, so we can leverage um, Azure, and we also have the option again to use Python and also a few, uh, as I said, uh, Power Query Azure ML capabilities in here as well. Um, as I said, cognitive services, there is something like, for instance, transla translation services, sentiment prediction, or you can also use your own uh, AI model, for instance, to make predictions. But this is uh, premium functionality if you want to apply it using Azure. R and Python, for instance, could also be used with a pro account. So there is no Azure needed for that. So that's it regarding uh, Power BI. Again, if you want to read through it, please pause the video if you like to do that. Uh, regarding Tableau, well, Tableau is uh, well bought by Salesforce and also now offers a lot of uh, well AI capabilities regarding Salesforce as well. Uh, for instance, there is a Tableau Einstein. Maybe you've heard of it, um, which is uh, available in Tableau. Then, of course, in Tableau we also have R and Python, which I like to point out because data scientists for oh, oh, often use this, for instance. But you need R Surf or TabPy, which are free extensions, but you need to have them enabled, for instance. Uh, other things like regression, time series, and so on, so these kinds of things can be used in Tableau as well. Uh, they are built-in functionalities simply by applying drag-and-drop functionality, which can be used by any kind of business user. You don't have to have specific knowledge about that. Regarding data preparation, we have Tableau Prep Conductor here as a product, which also has some kind of uh, 
Python options in there. And then we also have Tableau Server, uh, where, for instance, um, or Tableau Online, where there's an Ask Data feature, which is also uh, some kind of similar to what's available in Power BI. But you basically ask your question to the data, and then Tableau creates a visualization for you. So it's also uh, kind of AI-based, if you want to call it this way. So these are the AI features. Let's have a look at the next, which is ETL. ETL is very important, which means a data preparation. Data preparation in Power BI can be uh, done in Power Query. So Power Query is um, already was already implemented from Excel and then transitioned to Power BI and allows us to prepare our data, to shape our data, to build uh, the data in a structure which we can then leverage in order to create our star schema, which we want to have in Power BI. And there are a lot of transformation possibilities. Um, you can see a screenshot in here, but if you have covered or have taken one of my classes, mm -hmm. you also know about that, of course. Again, you can um, read through it if you want to do that. And if you've got questions, feel free to ask. What about Tableau in this case? And in Tableau, we have Tableau Prep, which is the ATL tool. Well, Tableau Prep is a separate tool um, and also requires license, but this license is included if you have bought uh, the Tableau um, Creator license. It also offers extensive data manipulation options. However, at least from my point of view, they are a little bit less uh, than those uh, available in Power Query. That's just my personal view here. Um, otherwise, it's easy to use, it's drag and drop. So again, a business user can use it without any kind of coding experience, for instance. Also, you have the option to automate this on the Tableau server, but this requires an additional licensing, the so-called Tableau data management add-on. Again, it's additional cost, but it is available if you want to automate this and then schedule it, for instance. So this is about ETL. So you can do ETL with both tools. Just to mention this, it's not like you can only do it in one tool. That's not the case. Now, what else? Next topic here is um, the question whether you use cloud or on-premise. So this is something I'd like to mention here because it's very important uh, if a company and you work for a company, for instance, and you decide uh, or you have to decide which kind of tool you want to use. Because if you decide or opt for Power BI, you need to be aware that Power BI is heavily dependent on the Azure cloud. So it's not like, um, for instance, we as a company use AWS, but we want to use Power BI. I mean, that's possible, but then you also need to have some kind of Azure cloud in your organization. And if this is, for instance, something you don't want, then I would not recommend going with Power BI. So Power BI, as I said, the service is hosted in the Azure cloud. And also um, AI features and other kinds of features, built-in features are also relying on Azure resources, Azure storage, Azure compute engines, and so on. Also, um, Power BI also offers an on-premise version, which you can host locally, for instance, if you want to do that. But if you want to do this, you need to keep in mind that this version is often behind regarding the features uh, comparing to the, the cloud version. So Microsoft wants you to go in the cloud. So also keep this in mind. For Tableau, on the other hand, Tableau is uh, also cloud-based, or you can have it uh, on-premise, so locally as a report, uh, as a Tableau server. However, Tableau itself is actually cloud independent. So you can host it, for instance, in AWS, you can host it in Azure, or also the Google Cloud. It's up, really up to you what you want to do. So regarding data connection and performance, this is also something I'd like to point out here, because oftentimes I read on the internet, for instance, that Power BI is not able to connect to so many data sources. Tableau has much more options here, or uh, Tableau, Power BI is limited in, in a certain way. Uh, regarding the performance, for instance, tab, uh, Power BI is only using or good with small data sources. I also, I, I read that on, on some blogs and this is totally wrong. Um, I don't know why people came up with this, but this is biased and, and wrong, as I said. Um, so you can use actually all kinds of data sources in both tools, more or less, even though I think Power BI now has even more options than Tableau regarding um, data sources, but still uh, the most and often used data sources are available in both tools. And Power BI has an import mode, which is the fastest, which uses also the Vertipack engine. And that means you import your data. And this means you take a snapshot of the data in time and you need to refresh it on a, on a certain schedule. You can do this uh, with pro account up to eight times a day. And with the premium, you can do it 48 times a day. So every half an hour is possible actually. You can also use a direct connection uh, or live connection, depending on the data source. But you need to keep in mind that if you use a real-time or direct connection to your data source, then this will degrade performance. So it's always best practice, if possible, to use an import mode. And also, the Power BI service um, supports streaming data. 
So if you have real-time data which you need to stream inside the dashboard, this is possible in Power BI Service, but only with dashboards, not with normal reports. On the other hand, in Tableau, um, also allows to extract the data, which is uh, comparable to the import mode in Power BI, and uh, which is really highly um, well perf performant, and uses the hyper format, which is a Tableau-specific format. There is no limitations regarding um, updating schedules um, beside those which your IT organization might set. But this is not like uh, we have in Power BI, which you say you can only use 48 times a day. Uh, theoretically, you can uh, have unlimited schedules, right, if you want to do that in, in Tableau. Um, there's also an option to live connect to your data, but also, again, this will degrade performance. So this uh, live connection uh, having worse performance is the same in both tools, okay? And regarding real-time streaming, this is something which, at least from my point of view, as far as I know, is not possible, at least by default, in Tableau. Even though I have seen some workarounds, which can also make this uh, functional, but as I said, by default, this is not available. So, what are the strengths about those tools? Well, if you ask me, in Power BI, Power BI is very well integrated in Microsoft tools. So in Teams, in SharePoint, in Azure, in Synapse, and so on, right? because it's simply part of the Power Platform. Um, so it's also uh, integrated in Power Apps, for instance, or Power Automate, which is uh, really beneficial if you want to use those tools. Also, Power BI offers an extension, which is the Report Builder. So if people say, I want to print out pixel-perfect reports, then this is something which can be done uh, using this Report Builder in Power BI. So also, um, if you have prior Excel and Power Query uh, experience, then this the Transition to Power BI is more seamless than, for instance, to Tableau because it is the same tool, um, more or less, at least Power Query, for instance. And uh, yeah, these are just a few things and you can read a few additional bullet points I listed here, but that's basically the main advantages of Power BI. Tableau, on the other hand, is often very positive regarding the feedback. So when people first start doing data visualization uh, and see Tableau, um, they really like the tool because it has a kind of Apple flair. At least that's what I heard uh, oftentimes as a feedback. And I agree to this because it looks uh, like an Apple product and it feels like an Apple product. You know, It makes uh, fun to work with it um, in that case. It has a very fast learning curve. That's also true. So it can get started really easy. And you can easily switch between, uh, for instance, a live connection and an extract um, any time, point in time. So you're not bound by your decision if you do that, uh, which is a little bit harder in Power BI it is possible to switch again back. But if you, normally if you switch from uh, a live connection or direct query to an import mode in Power BI, it's more uh, tedious to convert this back. And also in Tableau, uh, an advantage is you don't have rigid visualizations, which means in Tableau, you can start on a blank screen and just drag your fields inside Tableau and then still uh, figure out what is the best visualization. So it's not like you put, plot, for instance, a bar chart. And then if you don't like it, then you plot, for instance, an area chart or whatever. Like in Power BI, you just switch, switch the visual. But in Tableau, you are, have more freedom. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so these are the strengths. But the, where we have strengths, we offer weaknesses. So let's have a look at that. So weaknesses in Power BI is, as I said, we have this rigid visualizations, I'd say. So that means we can change the visual, but still we have, uh, let's say, um, a grid of visuals which we can use, uh, but there is not so much flexibility. Because if a visual can do, for instance, a certain or has a certain attribute, we can change it. But if it's not available to change it, then we can't really do anything about it. There are often workarounds, but um, it's kind of rigid. That's my point of view. Also, uh, we have uh, some features which are only available for premium users. And if you don't have Power BI Premium, then uh, you can't use those features. That's also, um, well, a pity sometimes because some of those are really good. You also have a size limit regarding the pro accounts uh, considering your data sets. And um, as I said, automatic data updates are limited uh, up to premium 48 times a day, even though uh, most often you don't need to have more than uh, every half an hour an update. But still, it's a limitation, I'd like to mention here. And uh, sometimes also uh, an issue might be for a company that uh, the releases in Power BI are very fast. So with each new month, a new Power BI release comes out, and this is often too fast for an organization. For us end users, it might be good, but still, for an uh, organization, this uh, creates challenges. I'd like to mention this here. And also in Power BI, DAX and M, which are the languages in the front end and in the Power Query editor, they are oftentimes very difficult to learn. 
I mean, you can start it, get started with them, and at the beginning you might have a, a steep learning curve, but still, um, uh, even the most uh, experienced DAX users and M users say that this is something you learn for life. So it's lifelong learning. Need to keep this in mind. And for Tableau, some of the weaknesses are then um, there's a lot of manual formatting, at least from my point of view. I think sometimes um, there should be an option to apply this uh, automatically or to, for instance, copy formatting, which is available in Power BI. So there's uh, some things which in Tableau are still missing, even though the tool is uh, already uh, quite mature. Also, um, if you want to print out uh, data, so if you want to export data using PDF, especially tables in a certain format, this is something where Tableau is really weak. So um, if you have uh, an organization and you have a management board which says, yeah, Tableau is nice, uh, but at the end I need to have it in an Excel table, I need to have it a structured um, export uh, the data, then um, Tableau might have limitations regarding this. And also there's a trade-off uh, between functionalities and dashboard performance in Tableau, but this is also actually true for Power BI as well. I mean, the more functionalities, the more things which you build inside your reports, uh, the more it takes uh, to load the data. It's, it's just that's just the case. And uh, as I said, you don't have a real-time streaming of data visualization if you need this. So if you don't have, uh, well, an application for that, then uh, it doesn't matter. But um, if you have something, if you want to do this, then this actually is limit, uh, not available in Tableau. Mm -hmm. And about FAQs, just at the, at the end, here are a few things. I mean, um, in general, Automatic data updates uh, are available in both tools, so it's not like uh, only Power BI can do this or only Tableau can do this. That's not the case. And um, also you can, well, get uh, emails, automatic emails regarding the data and also with a, a link to the dashboard or as an extract, a PDF, PowerPoint and so on. That's also possible in both tools. You can create bookmarks, so you have a special view, for instance, a management view on the data or anything like that, uh, which you can save uh, that's also available in both tools, as well as row level security if you need it, and also the connection uh, to various data sources. So um, yeah, these are a few things uh, which which uh, actually are often requested or asked, but these are available in both tools. So you can actually answer with yes to that if you ask. And there's also a mobile support. Sometimes people want to consume the reports on uh, their mobile devices. That's also possible. And security governance and so on, uh, governance concepts, these things can also be uh, built in. So I just uh, mixed the, po the points a little bit, but uh, that was actually the presentation. Uh, so comparison between the two tools. And hopefully that is helpful to you uh, because as I said, you can read a lot of this on the internet. And uh, from my point of view, a lot of this is simply false. It's just not correct. And that's why I wanted to mention uh, or want to implement this as a little bonus video because hopefully this will help you uh, to get a little bit uh, different insight in that. And as I said at the end, or at the beginning, but also at the end, please, this is just my point of view. I work with both tools. Uh, there are things I like in both tools. There are things I don't like in both tools. Um, so hopefully that was a little bit more objective than, than and not as biased as other views. Uh, but of course, as I said, uh, please make sure that you explore this and then, um, well, create your own opinion about that. Okay, so that's it. Um, if you have questions, Feel free to ask. Otherwise, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.